Hey everyone, Metagross Freak here with a League of Legends video. Now I realize this is going to be a pretty low-tech video, and that's because I realized when I was planning out what exactly I was going to talk about that this video was going to take quite some time. Um, I had a video, in fact, about just support items that ended up going roughly 30 minutes. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about the three types of supports, and really what the difference is. Now, you might just be thinking, oh, the difference between a tank, poke, and passive support really depends on the type of item you build at the beginning. If you build Relic Shield, you're a tank support. If you build Spell Thief's Edge, you're a poke support. And if you build Ancient Coin, you're a passive support. And that's kind of true, but also not 100% accurate. Because what makes up those three subtypes of supports has changed over time. See, unlike, for example, top, mid, and AD carry, which basically just have to focus on getting kills and farming up minions to buy their big items, support is a very different role. Support is a very altruistic role. It requires players to be uh, willing to sacrifice uh, minion gold, as well as be willing to sacrifice not getting kills and only get the assist gold in order to assist the team as a whole. Uh, it also requires you to build items that you wouldn't normally get in order to help the team with, effect, with, with larger effects, you know. Uh, for example, uh, normally someone wouldn't maybe, maybe for example maybe someone wouldn't normally buy Ohm Wrecker. Uh, Ohm Wrecker is unfortunately kind of not considered to be a very good item nowadays, but uh, it it used to have a good amount of value. Or Banner of Command, for example, Banner of Command is a phenomenal item, but the only time you're ever going to buy it is if you're playing a support. Um, supports also unlike every other class, are the only characters that basically have a required item. Of course, uh, junglers have the smite upgrades, but they have four different variants, and they have multiple upgrades. They have the challenging smite, the chilling smite, and the, uh, I believe it's the tracker's knife. This, with the four different enchantments, means you have, theoretically, then 12 different options as opposed to supports, which are required to get one of two, uh, one of three support items, as well as a sight stone, and chances are either a knight's vow, a redemption, and many other items. So supports really don't get to decide what items they get, they only build the items that the team needs. And it can be kind of a thankless job, you know. A support may throw, uh, for example, a Janna might throw a Eye of the Storm shield, on, you know, a Yasuo, and then throw out a Q, knocking up the entire enemy team, and that Yasuo, with the combination of his ult, thanks to the knockup, and the bonus attack damage from Eye of the Storm, may get a pentakill. And you know who's going to get all of the glory? The Yasuo. The Janna would be lucky if she even got a thanks for the help, or a man, I really needed that, thanks for giving me that assist. So yeah, being a support can be a really thankless job, and that's because also because people don't fully realize supp how support works. People think that you can just pick any support and you can assist someone, when in reality, there are three different types of support. So I've been babbling on for four minutes. Let's get into the first type of supports, tank supports. Tank supports are surprisingly the least common, at least from what I see in my low ELO. That's because tanks are kind of hard to play. In in low ELOs, you don't really see a lot of tanks being played because people want to go for that more damage for 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 more damage to raise their score. Uh, a lot of really common tank supports tend to be characters like Thresh and Blitzcrank, characters that can hook enemies, pull them in closer, as well as characters like. Braum and Alistair, who are really good at defending their allies while keeping enemies off of their backs. Um, a while back, we started to see some new additions to this. Characters like Leona, uh, sorry, Leona, Nautilus, and to an extent, Tom Kench, though Tom Kench isn't really seen anymore in lower ELOs. 
unless they're people who want to learn how to play Tom Kench. Tom Kench is an example of a character who, if you're really good at Tom Kench, you become a lot better of a player. He, he essentially gives you free ELO. Uh, these characters basically don't build damage, but only build resistances and HP. Um, you know, the most common items you generally see are items like Face of the Mountain, though you occasionally may see the, uh, I believe it's... Uh, I believe it's not Eye of the Equinox, I believe it's Eye of the Equinox, which is the combination of the Nomad's Brace and the Sightstone, though that's not a very commonly seen item. Generally, characters for tank supports uh, have items like the Face of the Mountain, Ruby Sightstone, uh, they might have Mercury Treads or Ninja Tabi, they, as well as items typically like Spirit Visage, Randuid's Omen, and Knight's Vow things that basically will prevent them from dying, enabling them to take out the opponents. Um, in the last couple months, we've seen, with two reworks, two new additions to tank supports, Tarek and Galio. Now, Tarek was always a tank support, but the difference is he used to basically just be good for his Dazzle, and now Tarek is able to protect even a whole team sometimes because of the buffs to his kit. Uh, Galio was also kind of one of those supports who was pretty lackluster, but thanks to his rework, Galio is scary now. He can even solo in the top lane or in, even in the mid lane. Um, these two are basically good examples of champions that went from being mediocre supports to being champions that are essentially, like, really good supports now. Uh, Tarek has a shield, a heal, and basically an AoE Kale ult, while Galio does tons of damage now, and is able to, you know, it has a taunt, he's also able to, you know, basically do a superhero landing, and his, uh, his, his gusts, which basically just used to do a little bit of damage and give people movement speed, now shreds people's health apart. It re both of these really got quality of life changes. Tank supports are really great, but you have to be able to do your role correctly to protect people. Um, as obvious with characters like Thresh, Blitzcrank, Alistair, Nautilus, and Tom Kench, and hell, even Leona, initiating can be risky. Generally, these characters uh, build up their abilities that will allow them to tank more damage. That way they can go in for the kill. You know, what's the point of Blitzcrank grabbing someone if the moment they come within two inches of you, they one-shot you? Instead, they have to build those resistances so they can survive all inning people. They're good, but they can be difficult to play. Uh, next up, I'm going to look at the poke supports. And to be honest, poke supports are basically mid-champions that migrated down south to the, to the bot lane. Really classic um, poke supports are characters like Annie, uh, Lux, Nidalee, Karma, characters who uh, basically were designed for the mid lane, but are in the bot lane purely because they wanted to have you wanted to have two AP carries, and that's essentially how poke supports go. They may start off building a spell thief's edge, but I can pretty much guarantee by late game they're going to be an AP carry. Uh, generally, you see poke supports a lot for if your mid laner wants to play, say, for example, an assassin, you know, not having a mage on your team, these end up becoming the substitute mages. Uh, a while back, Brand and Fiddlesticks both joined the ranks of poke supports. Uh, Brand, because he's able to just spam that stun, similar to Annie, and Fiddlesticks because he's an annoying piece of crap. Now, both of the, both Brand and Fiddlesticks will raise your ELO, but they're kind of cheap champions to play. You know, it's like bringing a gun to a knife fight. Most recently, we have we're seeing uh, Morgana, Velkaz, and Zyra as supports. Though Velkaz and Zyra are not as common anymore. Um, now, you may be aware I like playing Zyra support. She's one of my favorite characters to play in general. But Zyra, Velkaz, and Morgana are kind of niche picks. Uh, Velkaz is prized for his range, uh, and, but he isn't seen as often even in the mid lane, though that might just be because he needs a bit of a buff. Uh, Morgana and Zyra are well known for their 
terrifying power. Uh, basically, when any of these champions catches you off guard, you're done for. I mentioned the items earlier that you basically will always see Fro uh, you'll always see a spell thief's edge, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll see Frost Queen's claim. Frost Queen's claim can be useful on some of these characters that have a little bit less uh, have a little bit less crowd control, like Annie, who only has her stun. But on a character like Lux or Zyra. It's or you know even fiddlesticks. It's far sorry sorry. It's far uh, for a character like Lux or Zyra or fiddlesticks. It's far more common to see getting the Eye of the Watchers, the combination of Frost Fang and Sightstone. Not only does this basically fulfill your quote unquote quota of support items, but it also enables you to have now five items in, in which to build your AP. It's not uncommon to see a Zyra support or a Lux support end up getting a Magi Soul Stealer or a Rabadon's Death Cap. Essentially, if you don't have an AP mid, these will become your AP mids if they're able to get fed. However, like with any champion, if they don't get fed, they end up becoming more of a hindrance. Typically, the care, typically the ability that they, sorry, unlike the tanks who tend to max out their uh, their shield or their tanking ability first. Poke supports tend to get their long range uh, poke. For example, Lux's uh, Binding Light, Morgana's Dark Binding, Zyra's uh, Grasping Roots, uh, Fiddlesticks's uh, Crows, abilities that have long range, enabling them to do damage and probably a little bit of CC to help uh, to help give the excuse that they're assisting the ally. And last, we get to probably the more iconic supports. These are the passive supports. <clears throat> Looking on that left there, we have the classic five, you know, the classic five healer women supports. We have Soraka, Sona, Janna, Lulu, Nami, characters that he either heal or shield your allies and the, the, you know, the classic kind of squishy wizard supports that are classic, you know, when you think of the support role, you probably think of one of these five. Chances are Janna, Sona, and Soraka are probably one of the first three you think of, though Lulu and Nami are also iconic to the role. Uh, Zillion and Bard, for a while, were really common supports, though aren't really seen that much in low ELOs due to requiring more skill. Zillion and Bard also only have one damaging skill each, being their Qs. Zillion's time bombs are difficult to land, and Z Bard's Q can be rather unreliable. Not only that, but these supports Tend to be more tend to more commonly go where they're needed, with Zillion using his passive to bump up any ally short on experience, and Bard constantly roaming around getting getting chimes and meeps in order to try to make his auto attacks more powerful. On the right, we have the two most the, the two most recent supports, Ivern and Rakan. While Ivern may have been intended for the jungle. To, to be fair, he really does shine in the support category. His ability to shield allies, have a powerful root, summon a essentially a blue buff to knock down towers for you, which is actually more useful in some ways than any, and the ability to create bush, which is actually basically just unique to him, which is awesome, by the way, make him a really stunningly cool support. Also, his passive ability, while it may not be Phenomenal is really good for counter jungling. If your team's jungler is behind, or if the enemy jungler ends up falling behind, Ivern can help get them ahead by either counter jungling, uh, by, by counter jungling the enemy jungle, making it easier for your jungler to catch up and the enemy jungler to fall further behind. Rakan, I'm putting in the passive support category because it is recommended that he get Ancient Coin, and looking at his different playstyles, I think going full tank isn't really what he's designed for, despite the fact that he does give healing and a shield, and that the poke support isn't really what he's designed for either, 
because without a little bit of tankiness, he is basically as squishy as, well, as squishy as a A.D. Janna, to put it nicely. Uh, Rakan is also a phenomenal support. I've been playing around with him a little bit recently, and I plan on doing a video on him soon, or at least my thoughts. Um, hopefully, you know by now that I am a support main, so hopefully you'll find my opinions to be valid enough that it'll be, I don't know, worth a damn. That being said, these these nine supports stereotypically will buy Ancient Coin. They're also typically known for getting Redemption, as well as one of my favorite items, the Ardent Sensor. Though for some champions, you might, for example, like Zillion and Bard, getting Ardent Sensor might not be as common, instead getting items like Mykel's Crucible, or even maybe a Fiend's Unholy Grail. For the poke supports, however, Mykel's is sometimes often the only way they'll even be able to heal an ally. Um, however, that just because you end up getting Ancient Coin does not mean all of these supports will get Talisman of Ascension, or in some cases, Eye of the Oasis. For people who are really skilled at these champions, they may instead choose to go down the road of Spellfuse Edge. Uh, for example, Lulu, Nami, and Sona, while they're all really good with an ancient coin, they become even better if you give them an item like Spellfuse Edge. The more skill you see with, on these champions, the more likely you are to see Spellfuse Edge on them. Uh, for example, I really love Janna, but I'm not able to land enough of my Q's and W's to be able to warrant for me, to, for me in order to warrant getting a spell thief's uh, sorry, getting a spell thief's edge. To me, I play her more passively. I tend to max her shield first. Uh, same thing with Soraka. I max her heal first, and I would much rather have that passive gold generation and that mana regeneration rather than the ability to deal a little bit of extra damage from tribute. That being said, for them, I do buy Ancient Coin. Meanwhile, for Sona and Nami, since it's a little bit, or sorry, Sona and Lulu, since it's a little bit easier to hit their damaging Qs, I tend to get Spell Thief's Edge on them. Anyway, I hope this has been an interesting look at the three different types of supports. And if you're not really familiar with the role of support, I hope that this was maybe a little eye-opening on how the different types of supports play. I also realized I did not include every single support, though these are basically all of the all of the classical or well-known supports. For example, some characters, like Nunu, are technically supports, though you don't see them as support. Or most recently, Maokai has been showing up in the bot lanes as a support. Well, that's not really where he shines. Uh, of course, you could always just break the meta and play a character like Ramus support or Rumble support, both of which are really fun. I would recommend trying them out. But again, break the mold and are generally not seen unless people are just screwing around in bots. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I've been a Metagross Freak, and have a great one.